Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to talk about the new features that I have added to my Violin Figure Chart desktop application. I'm not going to talk about everything because I've already done that in the previous video. I'm just going to talk about the new additions that I have made. I have made all these updates to the Click Piano version of this application right here. And I am currently working on updating the Click Violin Chart version of the application, but it's not quite ready yet. But that should be done soon. So to start off, you'll notice here is a dial that is labeled MIDI Chan. So at the moment, the MIDI sound, the MIDI channel, is set to a piano sound. But if, let's say, you want to change it and change it to channel 10, Channel 10 is universally known as the percussion channel on MIDI, so you can have all these really funky percussive sounds. I'm not sure why you would want that for violin, but you can do it. <laughs> and then, if you look down here, before there is only one button for changing between the monophonic and polyphonic modes. I've changed that now, so this top button here, it changes it from uh, polyphonic and monophonic for everything here. So on the piano, on the music staff, and on the violin finger chart. But if you want, you can change it so that the violin is now monophonic, but everything else is polyphonic. And also on the music staff, it has its own button here. So you can really customize it that way. And the other new thing about here is the recording feature. So everything in this darker purple uh, square here has to do with recording. So let's say you are a composer and you're trying to compose this new piece for violin and you're using this application to test out the different fingerings to make sure that it works for the violin and that it's idiomatic. And you've come up with some great melody and you want to save it. So first of all, you would turn on this blue toggle right here that's labeled record and then you'd start playing. And then you would turn the toggle off when you're done recording. And then you would just hit the play button and watch it go. And then if you want to stop it earlier, you can just press the stop button. And now that's saved locally in the software, but it's not saved on your computer. So in order to save it on your computer, so that way you can access it later on, you need to export. So you just click this export button here, and I'll just call this test. And I'm going to save it on my desktop so I can find it and click save. And now it's saved to my computer as a .mid file. So I can now drop this file into a DAW or I can drop it into a notation software. So I'm going to put it in MuseScore here to show you guys something. Of course, this should work for pretty much any other music notation software. So whenever you import a MIDI file into a notation software, it's going to make its best guess for what should be written, right? So there can be staccatos in places that you may not necessarily want, for instance. Like here, there's a staccato on almost every note that I inputted. It can also look weird in terms of the rests and how the rests are written. If you play chords especially, you may not necessarily play chords, of course, in this context because we're writing music for violin, but if you write chords or if you, for instance, write an entire quartet and write all the voices into the same file and then import it into a software like this, into a notation software, it's gonna be a complete 
mess. You need to divide out those individual melodies. Otherwise, you visually will not be able to understand what it is is that's written out. Trust me, I've been through that. <laughs> um, yeah, so you are going to want to clean this up in your notation software before you hand it off to a musician, to a violinist, anyone really. And let's bring this up. Now let's say you've already worked on a composition and now you just want to double check that whatever it is you've written actually works on the violin, is actually idiomatic, or is actually the playing level that you want it to be, for instance. In this case, when you already have a file, you want to save it as a .mid file and then click the import. And I already have the test here, but it can be any other .mid file, .midi. And you open, and then you just press play. And then whatever file you have will just play. So let's say you've written something that is very fast, and it's too fast for your eyes to follow on the violin finger chart. Well, that's what this uh, slider is for. So if you pull it over to the right here, it'll slow things down. And it'll slow it down in milliseconds here. That's what's written in this box. So a thousand milliseconds is worth one second, right? So right now it's slowed down by a little bit over two seconds. It'll go by faster. And that's that tempo. You can't make it play faster than it is, but you can slow it down. Now, the one last new feature that I wanted to talk about is this drop down menu. So right now, the application is in chromatic mode. So what that means is that it will include any of the chromatic notes, any of the 12 tones that are in Western music. Of course, as long as it's within the violin range. But let's say you're like me and you're not so great at the piano. Then you click the drop down menu and you select the key that your piece is in. So let's say C major. And you'll notice that all the positions turn on automatically. I had to do that for a very good programming reason. But if you only need one position open, then of course, double check and turn those off. And now that it's in the C major setting here, if I accidentally play a note that is outside the key of C major, it will not go through. So you see here are all the white notes. And those are going through perfectly fine. But if I play one of the black notes, it will not show up on the music staff or on the violin chart. Of course, you can see it on the piano because the piano is your input device, okay? It has to always have all the options open, but it will not go through to the music staff and the violin chart, and it will not be recorded if you're recording a MIDI file here. And that was all the new features that I have recently added to my Violin Finger Chart desktop application. If you have any ideas of what else I can add to this, please let me know in the comments. Mm -hmm.